Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Commodore welcomes you to Lincoln Center. My name is Bob Truckenbrod, Vice President of Marketing for Commodore. And I will be your host for what promises to be a very exciting exhibition. For tonight is the world premiere of Amiga. <laughs> Good evening. What you are about to witness is the result of an effort of research and engineering that began in 1982 and which to date has consumed over 100 man years of engineering talent, the Amiga computer. On this screen at the upper right, you see the icon for the workbench disk, which we used to start the system. To the side of it, you find a window containing the icons of the top drawer of that disk. You see the clock and preferences tools, utility programs available under the workbench. And you see a selection of drawers containing other tools, projects, or other drawers. At Amiga, the user controls how he uses his time, not the computer. To give you another perspective, I'd like to bring up TextCraft, the word processor of the Amiga computer. TextCraft has a very rich user interface involving menus, cursor icons which change shape depending upon what portion of the screen you're operating in, and a very rich graphical display to make sure that the user always understands what is going on. Let's talk a little bit more about the graphics that the Amiga computer can produce. We're going to bring up a test pattern showing all 4,096 colors of the Amiga computer on screen simultaneously. I'd like to bring up one more static image. This is an image that's been in the graphics community for some time. The infamous mandrel, shown here in 640 by 400 pixel resolution. Now for one other item. All of these pictures you've been seeing have not only been brought up in screens, they've been brought up in windows. In fact, there are two copies of the mandrel up there. I wouldn't want to meet that in the dark alley. <laughs> the static graphics of the Amiga computer are impressive. But the real exciting thing on the Amiga is its dynamic or moving graphical images. Operating in screens, hardware area fill. As you can see, the screen system works even with dynamic graphics. Firmware support for the area fill system handles the general case, including crossing edges and islands. The Amiga computer is a true multitasking computer. In the upper left, a printing application. On the right, a sorting application with variable fonts, graphics in the middle, and word processing at the bottom. What does this mean from a practical standpoint? It means that a user can bring up displays faster than ever before. It means that a user can control his own path through an analysis of a business or engineering problem. We're going to bring up a couple of three-dimensional charts for you now to show you what I mean. The interesting thing about these charts 
is that they're being built from data built into the program. This really is how long it takes to build a chart like this once the data has come in off the disk. There a bar chart, now a pie chart. All running in windows, in screens. They're both there at the same time. You can switch back and forth between them at will until you get all of the information you need to out of them. Anything that can be displayed on the Amiga can be created on the Amiga. Equally exciting is the sound generating capability of the machine. The Amiga contains four hardware sound channels, each capable of reproducing arbitrary waveform polyphonic sound. And with all four of these channels going simultaneously, the 68000 is idle. But let me give you just a taste of the types of sounds the Amiga computer can produce. Here we have a sound sampler program. Uh, let's try the clavis. <laughs> the base capabilities of the Amiga computer exceed the reproduction capabilities of most people's stereos. This is best demonstrated with a percussion sound, like the tom-tom. We even have a few outrageous sounds on here. My favorite is the power chord. 